Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about romantic age, romantic literature. So, first of all, you have to understand why do we call it romantic age and how this age is different from other ages. As we have seen this, that this is normally the time we use for romantic age. It actually comes after pre-romanticism. Now, you have a question that, sir, what is pre-romanticism? And here we have to understand that the timing of pre-romanticism is 1745 to 1798. What is pre-romanticism? So, what happens actually? Let's go for a proper study. 1660, restoration happens, Charles II comes back. When Charles II came back to the throne, the situation of England was totally different because England was under the rule of Puritans for 11 years. 11 complete years they were under the rule of religious people. Yes, 1649 to 1660 because in 1649 Charles I got beheaded under the leadership of Cromwell and Puritans where Puritans formed the government known as the Iron Government, government of the saints also known as the Parliament of the Saints, also called the Protectorate. And Cromwell became the Lord Protector. 1658, when Cromwell died, his son was not a proper successor. He could not handle the empire, which resulted in the Puritan generals, army commanders, who started mixing, mingling, and formed a secret friendship with Charles II. Charles II came in 1660. He was in France. He had to take his revenge of his father's death. So when he came to take the revenge, he killed a lot of Puritans. But then the Puritans like Milton and others who pleaded guilty, asked for mercy, they were pardoned. They were pardoned under the rule called Act of Amnesty. Note it down. So note card low. Now what happens? As Charles II came and he also realized that he should not behave like his father and there should be a proper balance in the government, he started pardoning Puritans and tried to re-establish the parliament. But then this age was the different age because along with Charles II, his many courtiers, ministers, writers, cavalier writers who all ran away to France, they came back with the introduction of French literature in England. When these people came from France, introduced English, uh, you know, French tendencies in English literature, French culture in English literature, at that time, the best writers of France were actually trying to imitate the classical tradition. But these writers, they could not go and imitate the classical tradition. They simply started going for the cheap, easy, available literature. Technically, the vulgar literature artificial literature, city comedy, coffee houses, clubhouses. If you remember, even Earl of Rochester has written a book called Sodomy. So the people like who were the earls, they were talking about these things. We have a character in Country Wife, Horner, who is, you know, willing to seduce women and to be in the company of women. He pretends to be impotent. We found that people even coming from the Puritan background, like the Lady Marguerite, is fond of multiple affairs. We saw that multiple illicit relationship, seductions, rape, it all became the theme of restoration literature. There was a question of net exam that as restoration literature became vulgar, name the person who raised an issue. Jeremy Collier in 1698 came with a pamphlet, a short note on immorality and profaneness of English days. He questioned everyone and said that you people have degraded our restoration literature. He targeted nine writers. The first writer he targeted was Van Brew. Second writer he targeted was Congreve. Fourth writer was John Dryden. This is a question of net exam. The first writer and the pair of the first and two. After this, the writers thought in Augustan age that we have spoiled the restoration literature and we must work to change the literature. They thought we will revive literature. So when they tried to reintroduce classics, we started calling them neoclassics. So the neoclassics timing was 1702 to 1744. What was their aim? Their aim was to reform literature, remove vulgarity. So yes. They introduce a better condition of literature, the better situation of literature, but they simply ended 
the vulgarity but artificiality artificial rhymes uh, rhyme schemes city life city style comedy club culture coffee houses artificial attacks satires parody burlesque lampoon all of these things got reestablished and in short the difference between the restoration literature and augustal literature is that restoration deals with some vulgar obscene things augustans are not vulgar not obscene they tried to imitate classics but they were actually dealing with the fashion the city snobberies show off royal class they were not talking about poor man poor class and here as a revolt after the death of alexander pope pre romanticism start pre romantics were the writers who tried to find some connection with nature starting with alan ramsay he wrote gentle shepherd in 1725 then samuel johnson he started experimenting in blank verse wrote a tragedy in 1749 irene which was a failure then james thomson started writing in 1726 ended in 1730 and wrote seasons w s s a winter summer spring autumn there was a question set them in order these writers started experimenting with nature and writing styles and they are called pre romantics so who are pre romantics pre romantics are technically the first romantic writers who tried to change the style one of the finest example of pre romantic writing is thomas gray's elegy written in a country churchyard 1751 where the narrator is sitting in the village and has discussed the beautiful village scene the evening scene curfew tolls the knell of the parting day and the plowman plods to his weary way question of net exam weary way which literary device is employed here transferred epithet dosto itni bar net kiye hain aur itne paper dekhe hain aur itne saal se padha raha hu questions chhap gaye hain what are the questions which have been asked in exam now he describes the beauty of evening he describes the rural surrounding in the evening and then this description is in heroic couplet so neo classical style romantic kind of content that's called pre romantic style he becomes philosophical neo classicals were directly teaching directly preaching they were not giving philosophies here he gives philosophy let not ambition mock their useful toil their homely joys because all beauty all paths of glory lead us but to the grave where is michael jackson grave where are we all going grave vijay malya kaha milega last mein grave so what does he say he says all beauty all paths of glory all wealth awaits alike the inevitable hour so the heroic couplet style but philosophy normally heroic couplets were used to write heroic stories this was pre romanticism where we have william cooper who wrote negroes complained imagine william cooper a man who lost his mother in the age of 6 and found the portrait of his mother after 59 years and wrote a poetry oh those rosy lips had a tongue this man he imagines the life of alexander selkirk william cooper imagining the life of alexander selkirk and thinks that when alexander selkirk lost in ocean and reached to an unknown island uninhabited island what was his state cooper says that alexander selkirk was happy very happy and why he was very happy because he was close to god away from society and what does he say the opening lines are i am the monarch of all i survey my claim here is none to dispute if i make some uh, mistake in lines forgive that i don't use cuts in video it's a direct lecture i am looking at camera imagining it's my class talking to you all okay and those quotations are memory based so now see this thing so that is pre romanticism now we go for romantic age and to make you understand what is romantic age i will tell you some basic important points if you find the lecture easy then the subscribing button is just in front of you it's 1798 colors change no problem that is also romanticism color and two colors mixed together see when we talk about romantic age 1798 it gets started how lyrical ballads 
1798 publication of lyrical ballads with 23 poems 19 by Wordsworth 4 by Coleridge my friends I know you must be thinking sir directly lyrical ballads tell us what is romantic age first thing 90% people who are preparing for net they don't know that romantic age was not inspired only by French Revolution when you read graduation level book or Indian writers or some average teachers are teaching you then they will always say that French Revolution is the base of romanticism no my friend no remember this thing when you study in 10th class they say 1857 Kranti we fought against Britishers we fought but when you go for UPSC level then you know that who are the people who actually fought who were the people who supported Britishers how many states actually participated how many states were not even affected by 1857 that's called higher studies so all those who are taking the standard of net and JRF my friends French Revolution I'm not saying it is not a base it is a base but if you just know about French Revolution and you don't know anything else that will be a blunder French Revolution ke saath, dosto, yaha pe one more important thing comes and that is I will change the pen for you all storm s-t-u-r-m storm and drang philosophy storm and drang movement was actually a German movement German philosophy storm and drang a philosophical movement romantic movement and remember this thing there are questions in that exam that who are the writers who have severely inspired heavily inspired romantic writers like Coleridge Immanuel Kant, Skiller, these writers have inspired romantic writers. Do you know that Europeans were actually going through a transition phase of philosophy and romanticism? Pre-romanticism was the kind of movement going for nature, return to nature, but romanticism was highly romanticized. Wordsworth knew about Storm and Drang and French Revolution. Wordsworth was very happy with the idea of French Revolution and he wrote a line, bliss was it in that dawn to be alive, to be young was very heaven. So what are those lines? The lines was the bliss was it in that dawn, in that dawn, rest you can complete from Google, to be alive to be, have, to be young was very hard. He talks about French Revolution. Do you know when Wordsworth wrote Prelude, like 90% people who prepare for net, they don't read these things in detail and that's a mistake. For JRF, you must know these things. In Prelude Book 5, here Coleridge is introduced by Wordsworth. That's a question of Jamia Milia entrance exam. In which book of Prelude Coleridge gets introduced? Book 5th. Then again a question of net exam in prelude which book Wordsworth goes to France book 9 and book 10 these are the most important books where he talks about French Revolution so yes Wordsworth and Coleridge they became friend in 1793 then by 1795 they started uh, you know dealing with ideas and came with lyrical ballads in 1798 that was the planned attempt just remember this thing that if you like this concept subscribe it do you know wordsworth went to france to be a member of french revolution yes he went to join french revolution and there he found a lady married her and it went on 99.9 percent .9 students don't know this that wordsworth already got married in france and had a daughter caroline yes my friends where he has written a poetry also an evening walk where he's walking with his daughter so Wordsworth who, who went to France to fight in French Revolution married a lady Annette Vallon had a daughter Caroline and then when Wordsworth felt that the French Revolution is failing and all those who have come from England to support French Revolution they will be killed he ran away <laughs> 